What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Glad to have you here. I have a very special topic for our today's video. This is something that almost every single person really wants to know a little bit more about. It's definitely something that is less talked about just because of the nature of the subject here. But once again, it is something that is almost on every single person's mind. So this is what we're going into. We're going to be speaking about death. What happens after death? How can you better understand? Uh, how can you better understand the transition process when it comes to death and how life transforms, how life shifts, how life changes? What are some of the things that you can generally expect after death? Is this something you should be afraid of? Is there potentially a hell or a heaven? These are going to be very important subjects to understand more about. I'm also going to be covering a little bit more on the nature of past lives and how that all comes together. So if this is something that you want to know a little bit more about, then I highly encourage you to stay tuned for the rest of this video today. I'll see you on the other side. All right. So welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. So as I said, we have the subject for the today's video. It's going to be a very important subject. We're talking about death. So what exactly about death do we want to start looking at first? So let's first start with looking at the reality. The reality is most people are absolutely terrified of death. Most people are so scared of it, so terrified of it, just because I mean, the nature of death is unknown. I'm not going to sit here today I'm, and I'm, I'm not going to sit here today and tell you that I know absolutely every single thing down to the precise detail of exactly what happens after death. I don't. I have not experienced death in this incarnation yet, so I can't speak on that. But I definitely can speak on things in regards to my occult knowledge on what happens to the soul and how the soul transitions and some of the general stages that manifest when um, a physical body passes away. So that is what I'm going to be sharing in this today's video. Definitely make sure you're taking what I'm saying for a grain of salt. Take what resonates, discard what doesn't resonate. But definitely don't throw any of this out um, as if it's not important information because there definitely is going to be valuable things that I discuss in this today's video 100% sure. So yeah, so let's get into it. So as I said, most people are completely afraid of death, which means most people are in a state of living in avoidance of death. Most people are in a state of resisting and repressing death itself because it is something that most of us completely fear. The nature of why we fear death is because it's the, it's the general essence of the unknown and most of us are afraid of the unknown just because there's no logic to it. There's no way to grasp it. There's no full way to make sense out of it. And due to the nature of trauma, we like to typically um, create identities or create egos for ourselves that like to micromanage and control everything. And when we can't have that control, that is very scary. And that sets the stage for this repressed emotion in the nervous system to start surfacing to the forefront so that we can process it. So death is going to always be connected to actual emotional integration and actual emotional processing. When you are going to die, when you are getting old, or when you're actually at a stage in life where you're losing your physical vitality and you're, you're about to transition, you become a lot more emotional in those final stages. That's literally why a lot of people have those final regret moments in their later years if they're dying from older age where they wish they did a bunch of things. It's like they almost get like an emotional sensitive, uh, an emotional sensitivity to then realize all the areas of their life that they were being inauthentic to who they truly were. And they start having a bunch of regrets. I wish I did these things different. 
I wish I didn't live my life trying to seek my parents' approval. I wish I was truly who I was. I wish I did this thing. I wish I said this thing. I wish I was this person, et cetera. So whether we're talking about physical death, the body actually transitioning over, or if we're simply talking about ego death, it is always going to come with emotional integration and deep emotional processing. Because what is really dying is the ego. The soul and the spirit do not die. They cannot die. They are literally immortal. Okay. I know you hear a lot of talk in the spiritual community and the occult community of how to become immortal, how to be immortal, how do I become immortal? How do I live forever? How do I become immortal? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, the answer to that question is you've always been immortal. You always were immortal and you always are immortal. It's just that we're living in a physical body that is not immortal. But the soul and the spirit is and it always will be. Now, does that mean you can, you does that mean you can still get stuck in the reincarnation cycle? Yes, you can. But that is what it is and it's meant for people to keep um having those experiences until they can eventually get out of it. And that is up to someone's evolutionary growth process. And that's some of the stuff that I'm going to be discussing in this today's video. So with that being said, now that we have this general context on death, what exactly happens when someone passes away? And why do people die? Why do people pass away? So it's funny as I say that there's there's literally a dead fly on my table right now, right in front of me as I'm as I'm uh, making this video. Interesting. We have that death energy present. So let's start with this. Why do people die? Well, obviously, you know, in the more modern way of looking at these things, you can see that the body eventually gets to a stage where it gets old and it functions less effectively. And usually this is the time frame when the immune system gets weaker. And when certain illnesses and certain disease become more sensitive or become more prevalent, and then, and then the person is a lot more likely to pass away. It's almost like you expect it. Right around when someone gets to the age of generally like 80 years old to 100 years old, you're expecting them to die somewhere soon around, those, that, around that time frame. So that's sort of the more mundane way to look at it. But if you actually date back and you do a little bit more digging into the nature of the human species itself, there was points within our evolution where humans literally lived for way longer. So dating way back uh, in time, there was periods where the human species was given uh, up to somewhere around, I want to say it was 1,200 years, literally. I said that. 1,200 years of actual life expe life expectancy. And I believe you can study this in some of the Gnostic texts. I think it's in Gnosticism that actually discusses some of that stuff. But um, there is there was a point in time where we did have much longer life expectancy. And um, then generally from that peak in our life expectancy being generally somewhere around 1,200 years, it has shortened as time has progressed. And that's for many different reasons, and I'll explain that as best as I can. Now, just to give you another source of information that also discusses a lot on this subject and more on the life expectancy, the book, The Law of One, also known as The Raw Material, is a great book to look into if you're trying to take your occult knowledge to a much deeper and more advanced degree. The book's not for everybody. And once again, you want to take everything in that book with a grain of salt as well. You want to absorb what works, discard what doesn't. But I know that there's multiple spiritual texts that have discussed that the human life expectancy was much longer than what we're experiencing right now. And there's many ways that we can kind of look at that. As the life expectancy has shortened over time, we can kind of see we could well we could say okay well we're becoming less organic we're implementing much more chemicals that are harmful to our bodies and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. and yes that is true these components are true and if we were completely organically living and we were in a more holistic based environment 
So I'm thinking more of like a holistic tribe that is very shamanic in nature, you know, lives in an area where they can uh, harvest fresh foods. They're not around talk, you know, they're not around too much toxicity or pollution, things of that nature. If we were to go into that environment, there's a much higher likelihood that we would live longer in life. And actually there's many tribes right now that are outside of modern time society that are not watching this YouTube video that do have long life, uh, longer life, longer life expectancy than what we're seeing in modern time society. So we can already see that manifest, but is it a bad thing that our life is shortened? Is this like a really bad thing? Ultimately, no. Everything happens for a reason. So especially like when you live in a matrix, like what we have in modern time society, in the way that it's designed in this society, it's very, it's very, because it's so refining and so confining, there's a lot more room to make a lot more soul development and a lot more room to polarize um, in a shorter period of time. So in other words, existing within this matrix that we all live in here on this planet Earth, uh, going through the level of challenge, restriction, and catalyst that comes with this, there's a lot of opportunity to really grow. I mean, make some significant growth, pro uh, growth progress with this level of resistance. Think of it like, you know, trying to build muscle. You know, you're, you're breaking down your muscle by lifting heavier weights, and then you can build a bigger muscle like that. That's basically what we have going on. So the life doesn't need to be as long anymore. So not only do the toxins and the chemicals come into play, yes, that's true, but we also want to go deeper and ask, well, why are there chemicals? Why are there more toxins in our everyday environment? Why is the source of all creation allowing these things to exist? And the true answer to that question is because we don't need that long of a life in this type of society that we're currently living in, in order to make some serious soul progress or to make some serious polarization, evolutionary growth uh, progress. So that's really the lens that we want to have when we understand these things, because otherwise people like to get stuck in this like dualistic thinking of, you know, it's the government and it's these people and this is why the world's so screwed and all this other stuff. Everything's happening the way it should be. We have to learn how to understand that and ask the deeper questions as to why is it like this? Why could it be like this? Why is the source of all creation allowing things to unfold and manifest in this way? Because at the end of the day, that's what's behind everything, behind everything, okay? So um, that was one def definite context that I wanted to draw. So why are people, why do people die? So some people die much earlier than other people. And the answer to this question is not just black and white. There are going to be some people that come in with a specific purpose to do a specific thing. And once that purpose is accomplished, then generally they may not need to be incarnate on this planet anymore. And if the soul of that person decides that them leaving this incarnation is better for their soul evolution, that's what the soul will do. So the physical body will pass away at that point. When the physical body passes away, let's say, for example, prematurely in this lifetime, I'm thinking like miscarriages, early child uh, deaths, early, early childhood deaths, um, you know, premature deaths and things of that nature. A lot of the times, or not even a lot, all of the times, the soul is making a decision that the best interest for that human or the best interest for the soul is to leave the incarnation and then transition. So there's no such thing as a wrong death. There's no such thing as a death that happened too soon. The soul is always in charge of the death process. And there's other factors that come into play with that as well. But largely the higher self and the soul of the person makes the decision on what is in that person's uh, best interest. And if it is leaving this incarnation, that's what will happen. Now, with that being said, what are some of the other factors that can also come into play with the soul making the decision to leave the incarnation? So why does someone's soul decide it's probably better for them to leave this incarnation and transition somewhere else? A lot of the times this can be due to the human being's capacity 
to process the trauma that that soul has been through in this incarnation. So in other words, if the person, if the human being goes through a significant amount of trauma and they don't have the capacity to integrate it and process it, there is a higher likelihood that the soul may make a decision to leave this physical incarnation and then eventually re-manifest into a new incarnation experience to start over, to start over somewhere else at some point in time. Because if the person doesn't have the capacity to fully process the trauma that they went through, then they're going to waste a lot of time and energy living in this life, going through uh, many cycles of pain and suffering that are going to keep cycling. And that's just going to be painful for that human. And it would be a wiser decision for the soul to just leave the incarnation and then reset or start somewhere else with a fresh slate, so to speak. So trauma plays a massive role. Trauma is like 90% of the reason why people will pass away when it comes to premature death or when it comes to just death as a whole. So people that live long, fruitful lives are people that are doing deep, immense trauma integration, emotional processing, okay? Processing their actual authentic emotions. This is a key to life. If you want to study more on how this functions in regards to more of its science lens, in regards to how trauma affects the body and how repressed negative emotions can manifest disease and illness, go and get the, the book called The Body Keeps the Score. You can get this book on Amazon. You can get this book on Audible. You may even be able to find it on YouTube. I'm not 100% sure, but The Body Keeps the Score is a, is a wonderful book to start identifying how repressed negative emotions actually somatize, manifest somatically within the body as different forms of cancer, IBS, Crohn's disease, um, fungal overgrowths, eczema, the whole gamut, <laughs> like every single disease you can imagine has its roots in some form of a repressed emotion. So, I mean, think of all the people that die from sickness or die from diseases that manifest that they don't know how to work with, like cancer. That is rooted in trauma. So if you can actually get to the energetic root of what that cancer is coming from, whether it's a deep-seated fear or a deep-seated sadness that has not yet been emotionally processed, when you start processing that repressed emotion, you can actually start reversing the manifestation of the cancer symptoms, the, manifest, the manifestation of the cancer illness. And I currently work with a very powerful acupuncturist who specializes in Chinese medicine, and she's been doing this for over 20 years. And she works, I'm not going to say her name or where she works because she likes to keep it down low, but she works with a bunch of cancer patients and she has seen repetitively, repetitively over and over again, reversals of cancer diagnosis based on how she uses acupuncture to open up the energetic centers within the body to surface repressed emotions that are always connected to trauma. And guess what? Sometimes that trauma is deeper rooted than what they experience in their present life, life experience. Sometimes that trauma goes all the way back to the, the mom and the dad and the grandparents and the great grandparents. Sometimes you're dealing with a physical manifestation of an illness that's not even yours in this lifetime. It's just been passed down to you, but you're still a part of that same genetic code. So you're still responsible for emotionally processing whatever that energy is. And if you get to the point where you do manifest physical symptoms of any sort, that is always a manifestation of something that needs to be processed on an emotional level. It's always going to be a repressed emotion that causes energetic blockages that then eventually somatize. So that is something that I really wanted to cover in this today's video as well. This is very important to understand. So this, this should actually give a lot of clarity on, um, you know, life and death itself. So when you see people that die at young ages, even see, look, there's a deep spiritual component that goes behind all this as well. Remember what I said, the soul can choose to leave the incarnation if it decides 
that the human being that the soul is possessing is unable to process the trauma that that soul has been through. So when people even get into like random events that manifest like car accidents or sudden, uh, you know, just sudden, sudden encounters that take that person's life, it could be like a shark attack. It could be anything. None of this is random. It could be an airplane crash. None of it is random. It's still rooted in an emotional root cause that is connected to some form of trauma. And it's always going to be rooted in an inability to process the emotion that is underneath the surface. This is why when you use psychic warfare and you use black magic, this is why it can be so powerful and it can be so effective when you send that energy to another person. Because you're sending ritualistic energy to a person to surface their trauma. And most likely that person does not have the capacity to process the trauma that you're surfacing. So they have like a whole bunch of unhealthy coping mechanisms. They've got a crazy life going on for themselves. And then you use psychic warfare on them. You surface their trauma and they don't know how to process it because they've been living such a chaotic lifestyle already. So then what you're servicing eventually somatizes or it manifests in a car accident or something happens and it, and it ends up hurting them. Okay. It's all rooted in repressed emotions and trauma. This is what I'm really trying to nail into the coffin. No pun intended here. All right. So with that being said, what actually happens after death? Well, let's first start with saying this. Death is not bad. Death is not evil. Even if you have a premature death, it is not bad. It is not evil. And the whole trauma component, remember, this goes deep. So this could be also intertwined with karma from past lives. Some people will come to me and they'll ask, they'll say, what about you know children that get abused at that young age when they're innocent and they don't deserve to go what they go through? And I, I say that it, that's very unfortunate. And I'm sorry to any child that has to go through that. but we also have to take into account that karma exists in the universe, cause and effect, and nothing energetically aligns with other things without there being a reason as to why it's in alignment. So if there's a child getting abused in this lifetime and the child to our awareness looks completely innocent in some level or in some way of understanding it, that child before they were manifest into this planet their soul was in resonance with that abuse. So that means there's some sort of a karmic alignment, cause and effect alignment as to why this being is experiencing what they are. And this can also be associated with death as well. And it once again, it is rooted in trauma. So death is not a bad thing, no matter how it happens. Death is always going to be a good thing because it's giving you, a, it's always going to give you a transition. It's always going to give you a change. So what actually happens after death? Like what is actually taking place? Okay. Are you going to go to hell? Are you going to go to heaven? There's multiple different components that really come into play here. So let's go into it. When you die, as I said, it is always going to be a transition. I want you to try to imagine this as best as you can as you're listening to me talk about this. Try to visualize this in your mind's eye. When you pass away in the physical body as a physical incarnation, your soul and your spirit are now transitioning into a different dimension. They're transitioning into a different space of existence. And the space that it, it will transition into is going to be a dimension where there is no more physical body. There is no more physical incarnation. It is just an energy field. It is an energy body at this point. It can still be perceived. It can still be identified. It can still be seen and understood, but it is not physical. It is not tangible. It has nothing to do with the five senses for the most part, the five human senses. In this space, we are now able to view past, present, and future all at the same time. This We can call this space the soul space. The soul space where you are now viewing past, present, and future at the same time, which also means, and this is going to go into another aspect of this topic, that you are now actually observing all of your lives in general. So I want you to understand this. So in the human incarnation, 
we view time in a linear fashion. We view time as past, present, and future. Well, guess what? In the soul space, everything is right now. Everything is happening now. And you can, what this literally means is that all your different past lives and all your future lives in this moment that you haven't lived yet or the ones that you've already lived in the soul space are all happening at the same time. They are all manifest because it's that space of past, present, and future all at once. So from there, the soul takes the, or the soul goes into a healing process. So from the soul space, after the physical death, the soul goes through a healing process, which you could literally think of as a integration, an emotional integration. It's like a review, a looking over, an understanding of what you did, an understanding of what happened, an understanding of some of the places you may have made mistakes in some of the areas where you were in alignment. It gives you this review phase to process exactly what it is that you went through. And depending on the amount of trauma that you went through uh, in the incarnation before you passed away, that is largely going to be associated with how long you stay in that soul space doing this life review, doing this healing phase. Once that processing is finished. And let me actually add this as well. In the soul space, you are connected to what's often termed your soul family. Now, some people may think, oh, my soul family. And then they originally, they immediately think of their like physical family, like their human family of being like, you know, a lot, you know, maybe a handful of people. The soul family is way bigger than what you think. I want you to understand that everyone that has played significant roles in your life experience, whether they're positive or negative roles, these are individuals that are a part of your soul family. Remember, whether it's positive or negative roles, good or bad, quote unquote, they're a part of your soul family and they exist in the soul space where you're doing this healing and you are actually able to reconnect with those other souls and with those other spirits that are a part of your soul experience. Meaning these are energetic resonances with your unique soul makeup that are actually actively incarnating in similar life experiences as you. So they're incarnating to either play catalytic roles or to play support roles in your life experience. And you're, you just continuously will reincarnate with these similar souls that are already in energetic resonance with where it is that you're going in regards to your purpose, your soul's purpose. So this alone, this knowledge that I'm sharing alone should start to kind of blow your mind a little bit. This should start getting you thinking like, whoa, this is deep. So you're telling me that someone that I could potentially be calling my enemy right now could literally be a part of my soul family. Like they could literally be like someone that actually loves me in the soul space, but in the physical incarnation, they chose to be a catalyst for me. Whoa, that's deep. Yes. So you, what we do is we will reconnect with our soul families. This can also include animals. Okay. This can also include like pets that you had that you really loved and that you cared about. This is grandparents. This is mom, dad. This is friends. This is all kinds of people that you are reconnecting with. Now, in the soul space, we always have an essence of our soul. There's a, there's like, you think of it like this. There's a large portion of our soul that always exists in this soul space where past, present, and future is all at once and where we are connected with all of our family. So when we travel back there after we pass in the physical incarnation, we are, we are able to reconnect with those other portions of the other souls that are a part of our soul family, even if those souls are in current incarnations in other dimensions, which they are, okay? So there's always a piece of your soul that always exists in the soul space, even when you're in the physical body like right now as human beings. There's a part of me that exists in that soul space all the time, every day, forever. 
and we just transition back to that space. Well, I just felt some energy going to my head. Re- really interesting. I felt something touch my head. Felt like something put some knowledge in my head. That was really strange. Um, I must be talking about some very powerful information here. Oh, and if you're getting value from this content, feel free to share this information with anyone that you feel like has capacity to process this knowledge because this is really deep knowledge that I'm sharing. Once we go through the processing stage, the healing stage, and ultimately integration, then the soul decides what is the next best incarnation experience for the next experience. Where where is the next incarnation going to take place? And it will ultimately make that decision and it will choose certain types of circumstances that are going to be most in alignment with the purpose of that soul and what will suit the purpose of that soul in regards to life experience. So if the soul, for example, you let's say you pass away as a human being, you go to the soul space. You do the integration in the soul space for however long you need to. Now you're ready for the next incarnation. The soul knows what purpose you have. You know what purpose you have in the soul space. You will determine what the best circumstances are in regards to a percentage level of what you need to go through and what you need to experience to reach that potential or to live that present moment potential based on what body and what family you are incarnating into. So it will orchestrate basically a a sequence of opportunity for you to enter into the perfect family or the most effective family with the most effective life experiences to then allow you to remember what your purpose actually is. And that's how the soul Remanifest or reincarnates another body. Now, this also carries karma though. So, based on the previous life experiences, this new manifestation into another incarnation is coming with karma. It's coming with what happened in the past life experience once you become physically manifest. So, a lot of a lot of the times, but not all the times, people will reincarnate within the same family bloodline over and over and over again. Not all the times though, but oftentimes that's what will take place. That's why you can have a lot of familiar, familiarity with your family and with your bloodline specifically because most of your past lives have been continuous reincarnations within that same family line. But once again, not everyone is like that. It's not, this isn't black and white for everybody, but that is most commonly what happens. My past life experience, it, you know, one of, one of my more recent past life experiences was within my family bloodline that I'm currently a part of right now. Okay. So with that being said, this is what happens when we are passing away from this physical plane of earth. Then we're going to the soul space, reconnecting with loved ones, reconnecting with the soul family, going through the healing phase, the healing process, and then re uh, manifesting into a new incarnation based on the cause and effect karma that we went through in the past life and what will set us up with the perfect or best circumstances to live out our purpose back into physical incarnation, back into planet earth. And I'm keeping this oriented towards planet earth. This would be different for different densities of consciousness. I can't really explain that or I can't really talk about that in too much depth because I the memories that I have access to don't go that deep right now. Okay? And if they like even if I did start talking about it I would be talking about things that I'm not 100% sure on. So it would be a lot of just mystical type of speaking and I don't really want to do that right now. Now, when it comes to heaven and hell, what does this mean? So Most people, when they speak about heaven, this is what they're referring to, the soul space. The soul space is where all of us go to. Every single one of us, no matter who or what you are, you are eventually going to transition to the soul space. Once at the soul space, eventually once you've gone through the healing process, when you incarnate, you are incarnating into um, depending actually. So this is where it gets nuanced. 
depending on what's happening after you die. So let's put it like this. If you're a human being and you've been polarizing and you've been really working on your soul's development and you've started to process a lot of that family trauma to the point where you've reached a state of authenticity to yourself, you're now in a position where you can transition from this cycle of incarnation on our planet Earth. So this is what they call breaking the wheel of samsara. You get to decide to graduate into the next density of consciousness if that's what you're choosing to do. This is ultimately up to you. If the soul thinks it's better for you to reincarnate as a human again, it will do that. Maybe to act as a very powerful guide to help uh, help others evolve and help the planet evolve, or you will uh, graduate into the next density. So the way we can look at this as Earth is a third density planet, then there are other planetary spheres that can um, hold fourth density, fifth density, sixth density, seventh density consciousness on them as well. So if you're in that position where you're eligible to graduate into the next density, you're either graduating as a positively polarized being or as a negatively polarized being. This is where we can sometimes see the essence of heaven and hell in more of a dualistic way. For a being like myself that is working with a negative polarity in very much depth, when I eventually transition, my soul is going to eventually transition back into a fourth density consciousness that is negatively polarized. Because at the space that I'm at in my personal evolution, I have graduated. So I'm in a position where I am eligible to graduate into the next density if that's what's in my best interest after I pass from this physical plane. And the density that I'm going to graduate into is going to be a negatively polarized density because I've been negatively polarizing here on this planet for most of my existence. So I've achieved a high level of my negative polarity doing what it is that I do in order to be eligible to even graduate to the fourth density. And because I work with the negative polarity, I'm going to a fourth density planetary consciousness after my transition where I can continue going through my evolutionary process. And then from there, there's a whole bunch of other things that come into play on where I'm going from that point. That's stuff that I don't really need to go into right now. But overall, that's what takes place for someone who's positively polarized. And that's what they've been working on through this planetary incarnation. When they pass away and if they're eligible to graduate, they have the opportunity to move into a fourth density planetary um, experience. So that is going to be the entrance point into the social memory complexes. So you're either going to a negatively polarized social memory complex or a positively polarized social memory complex. There are going to be certain planets that harvest, or excuse me, not harvest, that hold negative entities, whereas other planets hold positive entities. And when I say planets, I'm not just talking about what we know in our local galaxy, but there's a lot, there's a lot of other galaxies that potentially exist in the universe as well. So there's a lot of other planets out there and there's a lot of star systems. Stars can sometimes be considered planets as well, depending on what type of star it is. So that is generally what will happen in that respect um, when you go to transition, um, depending on if you're able to move into that next density. And most people aren't going to transition in, into that next density, but um, that's what happens if you will. And actually, as time goes on, slowly but surely, more people are becoming more aware of these principles unconsciously, and they are polarizing. So more people are getting ready to graduate. And that's actually largely what a lot of beings like myself are here doing on the planet is we are preparing souls, whether it's the negatively polarized or the positively polarized, to graduate into the next density. So there's a direct correspondence or correlation as to why I'm doing what I'm doing with you know my YouTube channel, with my vampire ritual, with the occult order 47 that I'm creating that is just happening to be released now, that is just happening to happen now 
right along the lines of when our planet is going through some major energetic shifts, it's because I'm creating an opportunity doorway for people to start initiating themselves within the negative polarity to become universe B entities. So eventually they can graduate into the next density once everything ends. And people that are on the positive polarity are doing the exact same thing, but they're just doing it in the way that they do it. So as a whole, whether you're black magician or white magician, we're, our goal is ultimately to raise, to increase awareness on the planet and expand consciousness and help the planet go through its evolutionary process. Because no matter what path you're on, when you're a professional occultist or a real um, shamanic integrated being, then you're going to have a deep respect for the feminine universe. And you're going to want to support the feminine universe in all of its different processes. And it's not something you have to control. The feminine universe runs through all of us in all of our DNA and all of our blood and all of our nervous system. And it's naturally, when we're in rhythm with it, it's always supporting evolutionary processes. So it's just about learning how to attune to that state within, which is the authentic self, and then becoming a part of that rhythm to fuel these planetary shifts rather than operating against it or resisting against it, which is usually going to be a manifestation of a lot of trauma that is behind the, the consciousness or the, a lot of trauma that's behind the person that's in resistance. Because when you're not in tune with your authentic self, you're not going to be in rhythm with nature. When you're being driven by a lot of trauma and repressed negative emotions, you are in resistance to the rhythm of nature. And guess what? Nature will come to course correct you. And that's the last thing that you want to experience. It's one of the cosmic laws of karma. So yeah, hopefully everything I broke down is digestible. I know that this is kind of like a lot of information and it can be a lot to kind of absorb. But I think one of the biggest things that I really want to get out of this, one of the biggest intentions was to just talk about death and talk about the transition process and really paint a picture that shows you that it's not wrong. It's not evil. It's not a bad thing. It's not as scary as a lot of people like to make it out to be, as if something's harvesting your soul, as if something's trapping your soul in hell, as if are you going to go to heaven or hell after death, right? It's like all of this stuff is fear-based. It's fear-based. And of course, everyone's going to feed into it because most of us have fear at the root of some of our repressed emotions from our traumas. So when you hear an ideology that tells you your soul is going to be trapped and this is going to happen, it's feeding on your fear to then give you a rule set, to then give you commandments, to then give you a direction that says now you have to move in this direction or else. And that is only going to keep you stuck. It's going to keep you in that state of fear for the rest of your life. And obviously, if that's something you want to experience, then that is what it is. I'm not here to stop that. But when it really comes down to the bigger picture, all of this is happening for a reason. It's like we're all in this big game. It's literally like we're in this big game of life. Like when you enter into the soul space after the physical passing, you're, you're literally observing the game of life. It literally almost becomes a game. Like just like people will play certain roles in your life experience to help you evolve, you're doing the same for other people. You're literally choosing to incarnate within different roles to play within other people's life experience. This is oftentimes also why a lot of people feel like there's a big simulation that's happening on our planet. Like we're in this matrix simulation. And it's not really a simulation because things can be shifted, things can be changed, but there are energetic resonances that are already established that are like programs, but those programs can be changed. But when you get in, in alignment with the rhythm of, of, of nature, by doing the trauma integration and getting to that state of the true self, you actually flow with those programs more effectively. And those programs are not bad things. They're designed to get you to where you need to be in alignment with your highest potential. And this moves into a whole nother topic that I'll end up discussing in a different video that is based on how the higher self can actively and consciously program specific pro, uh, excuse me, specific catalyst in your life experience for you to go through and how it can do it much more effectively when you establish a relationship with the higher self. Whole nother video. I'll be discussing that uh, some, some later time.
But with that being said, we've gone long enough. I'm going to wrap it up here. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up. Do not forget to hit that thumbs up button. This is valuable content. Do not forget to hit the thumbs up. Show me that you appreciate this content. Drop down in the comment section. Let me know how it influenced you. I love to look into that. I love to read over to see how you guys are actually absorbing this information, how you're processing it, what it means to you, and all that other stuff. Make sure you're subscribing to my YouTube channel. If you're not yet subscribed, you're making a very big mistake because by subscribing, you are further linking into the content. There is a real energetic component that goes behind all of this. So make sure you are subscribing. Okay? Or forget about it. I mean, it's up to you. You want the most value, subscribe. Uh, now, I'm going to say this once again. If you know anyone that's going to get value from this knowledge, share it. I encourage you to share it right now. If someone pops up to your mind, you're like, I feel like this person needs to hear this content, share it with them. If someone that you know recently is going through a death, someone like close to them passed away or something of that nature, and you feel like they need to hear this information, share it to them. Do them a favor. Do them a favor. Give them this opportunity to understand how these things function so that there's a little more ease to that transition process for them letting go. With that being said, check out my Patreon. If you want to get access to exclusive content, you have to look into my Patreon. If you're getting value from my channel and you're binge watching all of my videos and you're absorbing the knowledge and you're watching it actively transform your perspective and transform the way you interact with life and yourself, you need to be a part of my Patreon. You absolutely need to. Like, there's no doubt about it. Tons of exclusive content only for the Patreon on the Patreon. Um, the vampire service is accessible at tier number three and four of the Patreon, which is a ritual that's performed on the 29th of every single month to transition you into the negative, uh, polarity to prepare you to completely enter into universe B. Very powerful service. I've talked about it many times before. If it's something you're interested in, you can definitely look at the videos on YouTube under the nature of universal mastery vampires, universal mastery vampire service, or even at the end of this video, there's going to be a pop-up video that I have show up. That video will educate you on everything you need to know about this service. Okay. We'll leave it there. Then as we go into the second link below, this is where you can book a mentorship with me. If you want to work with me one-on-one -on -one in a very powerful and intimate way, the mentorships is absolutely going to be your best bet. This is actually one of the most transformative ways to work with me in general, okay? And uh, I can only take on a certain number of uh, mentorships at a time. And right now, my schedule is starting to get really busy with it. So, you know, I have room for probably like two more mentorships. Um, so I'm just going to say that and, and let that be what it is. If you feel led to booking with me, then you will book. And if for some reason... I don't have capacity to be able to work with you, then I will actively let you know and we'll either save the mentorship for a later date or I'll just refund the money, okay? So that is what we're gonna do there. Uh, then the third link in the YouTube description is going to be the Lucifer's Foundation course. This is a course that gives you everything you need to know, especially if you're someone who's taking your occult self-development, like actual practical self-development, to a deeper level. If you're someone that's doing that and you're preparing yourself to enter into the clip off, this is going to be a necessary course for you to have. Necessary. Like, not you should, not I hope, not I want, necessary. In this course, you're going to learn everything you need to know about some of the emotional processing, some of the shadow work that is included with working with these demonic aspects of the occult in general more education on the clip-off, setting up your ritual space, guided meditations to connect with Lucifer, how to create a contract with Lucifer, and how exactly to design that contract in alignment with your soul's growth, all the way down to subconscious retraining and a whole bunch of very valuable uh, information. This course is only $333, obviously 333 for a reason, tapping into that current. But it's very, um, I mean, that's honestly, that is not a lot of money at all for what is offered on this course. I understand if you don't have that to invest, 
So there's an option to pay the first month 170 and then the second month 170. And then you have this course literally for the rest of your life. And it can become a tool that you have on your tool belt that you can always refer back to. All right. So that is the third link in the YouTube description. With that, I'm going to leave that there. And then the fourth link is where you can become a YouTube member. Definitely looking to becoming a YouTube member. You get access to the Psychic Warfare Emoji Program. It's a sequence of emojis that I've created myself that you can use in a specific way. You link in the name of a target, hit enter, and it actually causes psychic energetic effects to that target. It's literally the simplest way to use Psychic Warfare on the internet platform. There's about 3,000 posts where members have used it already. 3,000. That's 3,000 different targets. And there are people that are using it <laughs> in this moment, members right now that are using it. So if you want to take advantage of it, definitely look into it. There's also a bunch of other benefits that come with being a YouTube member as well. All right. Then as you go into the fifth link in the YouTube description, this is where you can purchase EMF incense sticks, electromagnetic frequency incense sticks. These are incense sticks that are literally the most powerful incense sticks on the planet. And I know that is a bold claim. But I also know that that is the honest truth to my knowledge. I, I've done the research. I haven't found anything that is more effective or powerful than these sticks, and I'll explain why. These are not your traditional sticks. They soak, as they soak in the liquid that they soak in, there's quartz crystals that are at the base with them, soaking with them, charging them energetically with the intent of us who's creating the sticks. It's me and Nick. There's e, there's, um, monotomic gold that gets dropped into the liquid mixture of the sticks themselves that eventually soaks into the sticks. So they, these are incense sticks that literally carry real monotomic gold. This is what significantly gives them their EMF properties. Then based on the different scents that we use for the sticks, one of them is dragon's blood and the other one is essential dream oil. So we're mixing the serpent energy with the moon energy. This is a perfect occult formula to give much deeper access to the subconscious, unconscious mind. And it smells wonderful. Then on top of that, these are long lasting sticks as well. Every single stick is going to last up for an hour long. Okay. You can literally, when you get your sticks, if you do, you can compare it to the local metaphysical shop that you have next door or the local smoke shop and see how much longer these sticks last and see how much powerful, how much more powerful they are. See how much more you feel an energetic resonance coming from these sticks. All right. So if any of you are interested in that, you can purchase them at the fifth link in the YouTube description. You go there, you place your order, and then boom, they're going to be directly shipped out to you. Me and Nick have been shipping out a lot of these sticks recently. So definitely get your hands on them if that's something you're interested in. All right. With that being said, this is going to wrap it up, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you all have an amazing rest of the day or nights, wherever you are, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.